Uh, yeah, my name's Phil Wildman. Um, I set up GG Insurance Services about seven or eight years ago. Uh, we're a specialist insurance broker uh, based in the UK. We work internationally. Uh, we focus very much in the video game industry, but we're part of a bigger group that does film, media, entertainment, corporate stuff, and work with other brokers. Um, but I've been a gamer since I was three or four years old. Hugely passionate about the industry. Love being able to support it in this way uh, and combining my sort of career in insurance with my passion and my hobby. So, uh, so we're going to talk today about um, uh, claims gone wrong. So we're not talking about successful claims. We're talking about insurance claims that went wrong and why and how to try and avoid that going forward. And I think this is this is a super interesting one because I think this is why insurance gets a pretty bad reputation because a lot of people are, oh, insurance never pays and my yeah. claims aren't going to get paid. And the truth is like, yeah, that does happen quite a lot. Um, but there's generally a really, really good reason for that. And yeah. Often just boils down to um, either, and I don't want to like point fingers anywhere. It's either that the broker didn't know what they were doing, the insurer didn't understand the industry, um, or the, 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 the client or, or company uh, tried to kind of muddle through themselves and weren't really aware of the risks that they had. So bought the wrong thing or, or whatever. So, um, yeah, claims gone wrong. So I'm going to kick off with with one in particular. Now, this one almost brought down uh, a whole department of, of one of the, the bigger UK insurance companies uh, where they basically did not understand the video game industry. The point I'm making here is like the insurance industry still thinks that the games industry is small and niche. However, huh. some insurers recognize that it's great and they understand okay. it and they understand the risks. And the example of this going wrong was uh, with one particular insurer in the UK in 2015. Uh, they just insured tons and tons of game studios. They massively underestimated the risk and they underpriced it. They treated them exactly the same way as small tech companies mm -hmm. and they priced it based on, on, uh, on revenues uh, where you know, games can take years to come out. So they're not oh, yeah. really making revenue, but you could have a 100, 200 person studio. Um, you could be have, you could be working with, with big publishers. You could have licensed IP, but your sales revenue is zero. Yes, yeah. So you had investments, so you had revenue and turnover investment, but your sales revenue is still zero. So they were charging hundreds of pounds a year for, for these policies, but offering full sort of five million pound limits on it. And no. They just did not understand what they were doing, yeah. and they had a they had a couple of a couple of really big claims. Um, there were two in particular, one one of which was for rights of privacy, where it was uh, a game that used real life locations and landmarks, where they just oh, no. assumed that oh, okay, this is you know, it's uh, it's out, it's a building, so we can put that in the game, but they couldn't. It was um, oh, yeah, so they got no. sued and. Uh, the, the cost was not just the settlement, it was the legal fees as well. Uh, so uh, insurance is not just, oh, hey, we've been sued and we've got to pay a settlement. It's most of the cost goes into the legal fees in, in fighting and defending the case. So, yeah. yeah, that blew through the full 5 million limit that they had. They had another claim that was very similar. Um, so this insurer was like, we're out. We are not <laughs> in the games industry yeah. ever again. And, oh, um, oh. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of insurers out there that will recognize game development or game publishing or just the industry in general as a recognized like field, yeah. and they will not touch it. So the takeaway from this is make sure that you, have if you're buying insurance, make sure that you declare to your insurer that, hey, we're in the video game industry, this is what yeah. we do. Are you sure you're on board with that? Do we you know this industry? Yeah, so we've seen quite a few companies that have come to us and said, oh, hey, can you get us like a cheaper quote than we're currently getting? So we said, okay, well, show us what you have. And they'll show us a policy, sometimes even from this insurer that I've mentioned. Um, and their occupation is listed as software consultancy or technology services. Mm -hmm. So it's super vague, but not game development because what happens if, if you try to apply and say you're a game development yeah. studio, they won't quote you. Yeah. So sometimes brokers will come out and they'll go back in and say, oh, 
actually it's technology services or something like that and they'll sell a policy to their client keep their commission uh and no one finds out when they're not covered at all so um yeah oh that's, that's not that's, good yeah it sucks it sucks so oh. that is and it's stuff like that that gets insurance such a bad reputation because oh yeah you know, you've, got, you've got insurers that are like we don't want to cover the games industry but then people still try and go and get covered from them and it's I mean, who's oh. really at fault there? You kind of like you can't fully blame the insurer for that because they've said no. you don't cover it. But they need to maybe sign. I would say they need to sign post that a little bit. But um, the takeaway from this is make sure that you have it in writing that you're covered for what you do. Oh, yeah. Um, otherwise, you're going to end up in a situation where you, you know you might be with an insurer who's like, oh hey, well you never told us you make video games, like we don't cover that. So oh, don't geez. end up yeah with another insurance claim horror story for that so yeah claims gone wrong um oh. cool um cool i'm going to give uh, another example of an interesting claim situation i have to be okay. very careful what i say on this one because it's it's a very specific situation okay. i don't want anybody to like work out who i'm talking about but, <laughs> Fair. um so virtual reality is um is a whole different dynamic uh, of risk versus um, you know sitting on your couch with a control in your hands. You're yeah. physically interacting with stuff. Plus, you've got something on your head, and you can't really see what's going on around you. Yeah. Um, so the risk of you tripping over something or falling over is pretty high. Um, there was a case. Uh, I I don't know if this is fully accurate, so forgive me. But um, I heard a story of. Um, uh, someone that was, was playing VR and he tripped over a glass coffee table and, and uh, you know, cut, cut, cut up and passed away. Yeah. So um, now the liability for that, you could argue, well, they should have known better. Um, Shouldn't but, have had the glass coffee table there. Yeah, fine. But the game needs to make sure that when you sort of on board with the game, it's like, you know, have you, you know, cleared your space up and like, yeah. you know, like the playing the Wii, it was oh, make sure you put your straps on, and like, oh, yeah. you know, there's no Ming vases around the house and stuff like that that you could damage, and um, uh, like don't throw your controllers at the screen, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, when you play the game, make sure that your sort of disclaimers and warnings are super, super clear, especially yes. with VR. Um, and you might want to consider putting in some sort of um trigger or some way to know that you, if you've taken the headset off and put it back on you get the fresh warning again yeah it resets it and yeah. yeah yeah so if there's a situation where you've and this is where i need to be a bit a bit careful about the exact specifics of this situation but if you take the headset off and put it on someone else who did not see the warnings and then they injure themselves um no. did the game company do enough in that situation to protect the users and this case was uh yeah the, the, the person fell over it was a broken neck um, it, was, it was a paralysis case um and the insurer oh, we know the insurers that paid that it wasn't one of our clients but we know the yeah. insurers that, that um that paid that claim and uh yeah they said it was a it's a total loss. It's a five million claim. The claim was for more than five minutes. Just that's what they have the insurance for. Yeah. Um, but they came. That company came to us and said, "Oh, our insurer doesn't want to renew us." <laughs> I wonder why. Can you help us get a get a quote? So, and this is how I found out who the insurer was because I, I went straight to the same insurer because they're one of the ones that do do VR games and they're, they're pretty cool yeah. and they, they work in the games industry. Um, and like. Yeah, that was us. Uh, we yeah, we don't want to touch this. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we asked them like, but what have you done to improve the risk? What have you done yeah. to make this better so this does not happen again? Yeah, what's changed? And this is where this is a horror story. Is like, well, nothing. That's why we need the insurance. The game's really successful. Um, so yeah, that was like. Mm. Mm. Probably no. Pursue this one. Uh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh yeah, no, absolutely not. That yeah, is so that is definitely our story. But the, the takeaway from that is if you're doing VR or fitness games or anything that is involving yeah. movement or stuff in the real meat space, um, bear in mind it's a different dynamic of risk. And most insurers, if you purchased it as a video game company, they assume you're just making a they assume it's controller or keyboard or just at your yeah. computer at your couch. Get stationary again, yeah. So if you're doing stuff that, that's involving movement or anything real or fitness or anything like that, um, oh, make sure that. your your uh, insurer knows about it and you you have the proper disclaimers and do as much as you can to make sure that your uh, users um, are like clearing space around them and yeah. being safe in that space. And and also, as I said, try to be mindful of any potential for somebody to like walk into the scene or or hot hot seat swap with someone else yeah um yeah it's, it's a challenge it's a challenge to do that but you want to in in the case of any injuries of that kind where it, where it goes to litigation you want to demonstrate to the lawyers in court that you've done everything you can possibly do to make it as safe as possible for the user and there's been no like negligence on your part or no shortcuts mm -hmm. taken so that's the takeaway from that one yeah, yeah. no nope. jeez yeah scary that is cool genuinely scary <laughs> yeah it's it's um yeah it's a risky business it, risky is. Business. it yeah. is yeah yeah cool um i'll give another uh another example of uh claims gone wrong um so this is something i've alluded to a bit earlier in, in top tips and it's it's it is one of my key things that i keep mentioning is is being transparent with mm -hmm. what you do now this was one where um it was it was a game company that did not disclose their activities um and they they were working on an unannounced title so they had a title out already and they had insurance that was a fairly traditional based title it was it was all fine was no, nothing weird about it yeah um but they were working on a new title a new game it was unannounced they didn't okay. tell anybody about it the company line was this is this is you know stealth mode we're not telling anyone what it is yeah. um they wanted insurance for it um it wasn't one of ours but the insurers told us this this had happened um the broker didn't ask enough questions they just assumed that nothing was going on. It was just the same old game. Yeah. They were getting coverage for. Yeah. And Similar type of game. It's the same studio. So in theory. Yeah. 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 But the new game involved licensed IP as well as being in a contemporary setting. Uh, and they were putting stuff in the game that they did not have licenses for. Oh, no. On the basis that, well, it takes a long time to get these licenses agreed and negotiated. So we're just going to put it in the game anyway, yep. um, and it'll be fine because uh, we don't want to wait six to twelve months to get a to get a license approved. Oh my gosh, um, no. And we're just going to assume we'll get it done. So uh, yeah, then that ended up being a big uh, copyright infringement claim. Oh yeah, and they just didn't they just didn't have a leg to stand on. Uh, and no. the insurers said, well, we shouldn't be expected to pay for this because that was willful negligence yeah you knew that you did not have the licenses to do this and you're being sued on on copyright grounds because you're putting licensed ip into your game that you're not allowed to do yeah. and okay fine the game is still under development but they found out about it and they're suing you for it yeah so if they you find out about yourself. it then something's out there there then even yeah. if it's just like a closed beta or something like a test yeah. or any like any of that yeah. then you're in trouble yeah it ended up being um a big claim for uh it was basically the, the lawyer's costs and the legal dispute so it mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily a damages claim it was just a big you know a oh, massive, yeah. massive lawyers built it to, to get all oh. that mess sorted out and the insurer said we we can't like this would have been covered under um under the professional liabilities but because you basically willfully put this stuff in your game knowing mm -hmm. that you didn't have the licenses because you're trying to cut corners it's you, you just can't do that you have to always act as if you're uninsured um and yeah another sort of uh insurance 
horror story. Now, this is this is um, this is an interesting one. So, this is not a claim yet, mm-hmm. um, but this is an issue that I see being a problem for a particular company. Now, I've got to be careful what I say because this is a this is an active uh, an active ongoing yeah. discussion. But um, it's it's a company that is uh, it's got a game that involves user generated content. Now, okay. as soon as I say that, I think a lot of lawyers like needles are going to be flicking around. Um, anything to do with UGC, you've got to be super careful with. Um, yep. There's if, if you're allowing people to bring stuff from the outside into your game in any way, shape, or form, you need to be really, really careful on what you're letting them bring in. Um, it needs to be done in such a way, and again, like definitely get lawyers' advice on this. Um, but this particular situation is it's a game that allows you to basically import almost any assets, including sound bites, into the game, and then for other users to then download them and use them in in their sort of area of the game. So what this is what this has opened up is effectively a file sharing system that that is within the game, um, and a lot of the mechanics are revolve around this so it's very Mm. difficult for them to now take this out but the the short version is i could upload a song file yeah to the game and then another user can then download that that's not what it was intended for no but but people will find a way to intended for people to like you know create assets and and share them and share their work and their artwork and that was the intention but it's now created this this scenario where users can basically file share movies and audio yeah. and it's, it's a massive um big lawsuit waiting to happen um, yeah and it's very oh, difficult boy. for them to to, to well um yeah they, they should definitely get some some legal advice there but that is going to be something that uh the insurers are going to have a field day with um so that would come under uh copyright and trademark infringement but the argument would be, is that willful negligence on the company's part? It was unintentional. It's not what it was designed for. Mm-hmm. Um, but you would think that they should have known. Um, yeah. So, People are going to try to find ways around. I always think of, like, even if you're mm-hmm. allowed to input a name, you have to be mm-hmm. careful. Like, they don't let you do certain things. Or a lot of that's actually brought for, like, in probably alignment with copper and, like, making sure it's child-friendly. But, like... Mm-hmm. It's the, you know, the second you allow them to bring in outside content, it is going to get abused for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with, with the best intentions in the world. And they do have the best intentions. That is not what it was designed for. Um, oh. Yeah, it's it's now facilitated this whole thing. And um, it's, it, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, beware unintended consequences is the takeaway from, from that. Yes. Mm. What I'm also getting is talk to lawyers and they can help point out that where things could possibly yeah, go wrong. That's the kind of thing that probably should have got flagged like super early on. Oh um, yeah. So yeah, I, I think I mentioned this uh, on a previous video is don't be afraid to talk to lawyers. Like they are there to help. Uh, yes, they can be expensive, um, but they generally are there to, to help you not end up in these sticky situations. And insurance, the same thing. Insurance is there to try and, help you get out of these problems, but only where it's it's not been complete willful negligence and, and lack of lack of TLC from, from your side. So a lot of places um, will have the like free 15, mm, 20 minute consultations, use that by check, make sure you feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And for us, um, talk to us anytime. Like we are genuinely here because we help. We yeah. don't want you to get to this point. Um, and, and the whole point of this this section is how things can go wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but everything that I've mentioned in this section, it was all completely avoidable, very solvable. Um, if they'd taken advice early, uh, either yeah. advice from a lawyer or a friendly insurance broker, um, at, at an early stage. Yeah. So my, my main takeaway from oh. this is, you know, engage with insurers and brokers and lawyers early on. Um, they've seen it all before. They're there to help you. They're not just there to take money off you. Um, uh, you know, we're, all, we're all in this together so yeah we want to make cool games let's help each yeah. other not get in trouble while we're at it yes that's the idea, that's the idea. <laughs> keep making cool stuff